This is a PCI card that allows me to hook up older IDE drives to my new computer. I think it's pretty awesome since um, I'm always transferring files between my new and my old computers and so I don't have to have a middleman computer or anything, just hook up the hard drive. This is for PCI, like standard PCI. People have been going on about how PCI should die and it should be replaced by PCI Express 1X slots, but I've not used one PCI 1X slot and I'm using two PCI cards. so. I think PCI is way more useful than PCI 1X, but of course 16X um, is for video cards and stuff like that, so that's how it's gotta stay. I don't, I don't care, PCI should stay. So obviously I'm gonna throw this back into my computer real quick. Well, I do four times the speed video, super fast, yes. And then I'm gonna plug in the first victim, which is a uh, Mac store hard drive. I think it's six or either seven or 14 gigabytes. I'm not sure. But I have this little Molex here I can pull out from the side of my computer. It might like make my kill management not look as good, but I don't care. Usability over um, aesthetics for sure. But this specific drive is not formatted. I stopped to format when it was formatting once. It does work, but right now it's just not formatted, so I'm just going to skip on to the next one. Which is this other Mac store right here. This drive right here has stuff on it, so I'm just going to format it real quick and then throw something on it just to show. So the format is now complete, and to just demonstrate this card's data transferring, capa transferring capabilities, I'm going to throw on my emulators from my bigger hard drive under this. And we'll see with this little close-up here of how fast this actually goes, about 40 megs or 30 megs, somewhere around there, per second. So now it's time for this thing's real test. The Western Digital Caviar 21200 is still on the sled for the 486. And this is the drive that I'll be probably transferring most often to for older games and stuff, just so I don't have to get the floppy disks out and all that. So let's see how well this controller handles this drive. Okay, the first thing we're going to want to note is that this drive takes a lot longer than other drives to spin up. So we will notice right here, it does not detect the drive. And so, when the drive spins up and it initializes, it sends the signal to Windows right when it's booting up. So guess what it does? It's like Windows is like, oh, someone hot swapped an IDE drive, let's just freeze. So what I do is, you know, pick up my camera like a retard here in a moment after I, you know, show you how much it froze and reset the computer. But the drive is still spun up and initialized when you hit the soft reset. So watch it show up here. It'll say Western Digital Caviar, 1.2 gig, right there. There we go. And then it should boot into Windows like normal, like my 23 second boot time, after you tell it to boot normally. Speedy, speedy on my SSD, look at this. Just boom, the logo hasn't even done yet. Another showing off with the SSD, I think it's super speedy. So the computer reads the drive and you can transfer files. Look at all this DOS junk. Isn't it just beautiful? So this Chasm game is obviously not a DOS game, but I'm just going to move it here just to prove a point. All I got to do is move stuff onto my 486, so if I want to install a driver or a game, all I got to do is get the hard drive out of the machine, put it on this, and then move it. And I don't have to deal with any of the other secondary computers and floppy disks and flash drives and all that baloney. Just gotta move it directly over. And it can delete stuff too. Voila. So that is the um, IDE controller for the PCI. Works pretty good and I would recommend getting one for transferring old files.